Greetings and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about Nox. Nox is an Android emulator that I use regularly in both trying out new gacha games as well as for recording and streaming some of the current games that I play. Do you have an older phone that struggles with running the mobile games that you want to play? Nox has you covered. Want to play on your computer instead of your phone as you watch anime, YouTube, and play other games? Nox has you covered. Want to hook up your tablet or laptop to your big screen TV and play mobile games with a controller? Yep, that's right. Nox has you covered. So what's first? Well, first you're going to want to click on the link in the description and download the software. Once you have this downloaded, you will want to install it, and it is a very easy install. As you can see in the background, I am running through this at very ludicrous speeds. So now that we have Nox downloaded and installed, let's take a look at what we have to work with here. So as you can see, this looks just like your phone slash tablet home screen. If you look along the top and the right hand sides, you will see quite a bit in the way of options. At the top, you have your theme center, which will allow you to change the layout. You can download extra layouts here or customize them. Next drop down will give you access to the system info, FAQs, feedback, and system tools. After that, you have your system settings, and this will be where you will be checking for updates, activating root, setting your performance and screen settings, change the model of the phone you are emulating. If that's a thing that you need to do, you can tweak your UI in here as well as your shortcuts. Now I have tweaked the right hand menu bar a little bit to throw in the things that I require. So you will want to make sure that when you are setting this up that you go into the interface section and add and or delete these as you see fit. Going from the top, we have the keyboard controls, and this is going to be very important for those of you planning to play any mobile games with features like movement or multi-button clicking instead of just the standard one-finger tap games. This is where you will set up things like a D-pad, crosshairs, fire buttons, as well as various other options. Playing a game that requires you to be in certain locations, well, using the virtual location setting can help you manage that. Don't want your mouse to fly off the screen? You can lock it to the emulator with the next option. You also have your full screen capabilities. Next up is the volume up and down and your multi-instance manager. This allows you to manage multiple emulators at once. Now you can create and add as many emulators as you want to your computer. Just be aware that they are very resource heavy. Your next option is going to be a huge time saver, the macro recorder. Have a game that requires you to just continuously tap on something over and over again. Well, you can set up a macro to eliminate that finger tap. I would suggest being a little bit leery of using this though to automate gameplay as the TOS of most games restrict this ability. These little scissors down here, yeah, that's your screenshot button. You can rotate your screen with the next one and couple that with the full screen to make this into a true full screen. Next is the place to configure and modify your two finger controls. Looking to make videos for YouTube, the video recorder can be used to help assist in that. And last but not least, you have your controller settings. Now, you do need to finagle things a little bit if you're not using an Xbox controller. If, if you're going to use a PS4 controller, you will have to add in extra software in order to make that happen. So now that we have all these options and menus out of the way, let's take a look at how to set it up to play games like Azure Lane. Now, as you can see, there are a bunch of dots on my screen. These are my keyboard controls to play Azure Lane with. And additionally, if you want to, you can use these to set up your controller settings. The downside of setting it up to map controller settings to your keyboard is it is going to clutter up your screen quite a bit. So I like to use a very minimum amount of buttons and then just use my mouse to click myself into the map and then I can fly all over the screen with this. One of the biggest advantages of Knox is that you do not need to have infinite amounts of phone space. I don't know how many times I have run into an issue where I want to put a new mobile game onto my phone. Maybe I'm playing three, four gotcha games. I've got some installed that I've, I've quit, but I just never got off of my phone. And now you have to delete one in order to put another one on. With Knox, you have 
quite a bit of space. Well, you have pretty much your entire computer's worth of space. So this is really great. Like I said, I enjoy having these on here just because I can, you know, pop these open while I'm supposed to be working on videos or any number of things and just kind of have it on a screen minimized. I don't have to have the app on my phone sending me push notifications. Maybe it's a game that I only play every so often or super casually and I don't want push notifications or anything like that. So I just try out a lot of games on Knox. And like I've said before, you don't have to worry about your phone's specs or your tablet's specs because this runs, you can actually set the settings that you want. How much RAM do you want it to use? How much CPU do you want it to use? And that is on the screen right here. And you can tweak all of these settings to optimize the experience that you're having while playing these games. Now, as I have been playing quite a bit of Azure Lane, the question came up quite often of, you know, can you play this on the PC? How do you play this on the PC? Nox is going to be one of the better ways to do it. I have used multiple other emulators and I prefer Nox. I've always preferred Nox. They are very prompt on updating their software. I think for me, the biggest aspect of this is to not have to continuously be looking at my phone while I'm doing other things on my computer. So overall, huge fan of Knox. Like I said, there's a link down in the description for you to get that. If you have any questions or have any concerns on installing, just let me know down in the comments and I will try to help you out through this. As always, guys, I hope that this helped you out and I will catch you next time. Take it easy. Peace.